It is freezing here in Melbourne. Now, I know some of you have been giving me a little bit of shit on Facebook saying that 14 degrees is not cold. Well, it is for me, all right? It's freezing. So I've got a nice hot cup of tea, my nice warm jacket on. But today, I'm talking about foam again for a change. Now, when Philips first announced this recall, they stated that the foam degradation could be exacerbated by the use of unapproved cleaning methods, such as the ozone sanitizers that many of you use, the SoCleans, and there's many others that are sold online and through CPAP clinics around the world. They also stated that it could also be caused by high heat and humidity. That could also be playing a factor. Ozone to me was the great mystery. I mean, could it really be causing the foam to break down or was Philips just using it as a red herring to distract customers. Also, if this was true, could the use of ozone be potentially degrading the foam in other CPAP machines, like your ResMed and your Fisher & Paykel? I just had to look into it and find out for myself. Now, a lot of you on the private Facebook page would have already seen the experiment, but for those of you not on that page, basically what I did was this. I grabbed brand new foam from the DreamStation 1 Dream Station 2 and the ResMed AirSense 10, put it in a bag and then nuked it with four ozone generators for five days straight, 24 hours a day. And this is what it looked like. It was pretty crazy. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. All right, the great foam experiment. Four ozone generators pumping in to the bag full of DS1, DS2, and ResMed foam. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! So here's the results. First up is, this is the polyester polyurethane foam. This is the recalled foam from Philips. And I almost feel like I should be wearing a, a mask when doing this or a hazmat suit, but you can see here that the foam has just become completely it's almost melted, look at it. The foam just gets all black and sticky like this. So it's had a big impact on the structure of the foam. Look at it, it's sort of like eaten away at it. You see that? And what's happening is when this foam degrades, obviously it's releasing chemicals. I can smell them right now. Are you telling me that this sucker is nuclear? But then all these little black particles are breaking off and that can obviously then enter the turbine and then be shot out down the tube I might change my gloves and open up the next one. All right, so I feel like a bit of a drug dealer here. In my little bags, dealing foam. All right, so the next one is the ResMed AirSense 10 foam. So this is the only little piece of foam that they have in their device. And this little black bits on here is actually from the other foam, but the actual integrity of this foam is still pretty much the same right around. It's, a, it's changed a little bit, but it's, you can still see it's quite strong. So the foam is quite resilient to the ozone. And lastly, in my other little drug bag, my cocaine foam. And here's the Dream Station 2 foam, or the snowflake foam as I refer to it. It also seems to not be affected by the ozone, although this foam, just in general, is really delicate. I do have my worries about its longevity. It's very delicate, this foam. It seems like it's really easy just to break. Philips are obviously pretty confident in it, so we'll just have to see how we go with that. And that's it. That's all the foam. The great foam experiment. All right, so where to from here? Well, I think until the TGA actually comes out and approves an ozone device for sanitizing your CPAP gear, you should definitely stop using them for the time being. Now, I do know that many of the viewers use a brand called SoClean. It's another ozone generating device, probably the best one on the market. Now, I know SoClean is currently in the process of registering their product with the TGA as a class two cleaning device. And if that product does get the green light from the TGA, then I will certainly be more than happy to revisit this video, have a look at their device and educate you further. Before I wrap up this video, I do wanna remind all the Phillips viewers watching that regardless of ozone use, high heat, humidity, all that stuff, you are still gonna be exposed to the volatile organic compounds that are above safe levels from day one, no matter what. So you really need to talk about that with your doctor if you are wanting to continue using your Philips CPAP device. 
Now, most doctors, as much as I hate to say this, are clueless on this. They really are. So what you need to do, I've put a PDF in the description of the video. Give them that PDF, print it off, give it to them. And then that way they can get educated and they can educate you on what's best for you and your health. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you've got some spare time, please consider liking and sharing the video on your socials. You can subscribe to the channel if you want. And we've also got a great private Facebook page, which is growing really fast, full of great people. Until next time, all the best, sleep well, look out for one another, and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.